the mission was always to build the Web3's most user-aligned wallet. It's been interesting to see uh, NFID getting the Google, um, you know, auth and facial scan and all that. Like, it was just a breeze. We do have uh, email authentication to begin with, and then pass keys, so biometric scans, fingerprint or, or face scan, or even the pin code on your computer, depending on how it's set up, to secure access to it. So nobody would be able, even if they hacked your email address or, or something, uh, first of all, like, you should always have 2FA on your email accounts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely don't run the risk of that. An even more secure option, use biometrics specifically on the wallet itself, and now only a face scan or a, a finger scan would be able to authenticate anyone to your wallet. Like that's, that is fantastic security yeah. right there. It's also ends up being really hard to lose. The analogy is the time that we went from locally saved documents on our computer to using docs in the cloud. That's the, that's the analogy here. It's, it's pretty similar. So just like a document that can only be saved locally is easy to lose. You can't, like, it's really hard. You, how would you, if you got on your computer, how would you get that document to the other computer? You'd have to uh, obviously send it somehow or put it on a USB stick and transfer. There needs to be some recovery process, just like today's wallets. We have this 12 or 24 word recovery phrase that we then have to import to a new device so that we can get our kind of state back. But when you have a decentralized cloud wallet, uh, the state, the wallet is in the cloud. So you can access it from any of your devices, which makes it really convenient and very hard to lose because you don't need that backup mechanism. Everything is, is saved in the cloud, uh, in a decentralized cloud, so that it ends up being really hard for you to lose. It's more friendly for a user like my mother to, to grow accustomed to that versus having her like write down a seed phrase 12 times and you know go through that <laughs> that whole mess of things. I don't know about you, but I used to write papers like uh, on my computer and sometimes my computer would just run out of gas. It would crash and all of my data was gone because it hadn't been saved to the local drive. I don't think that's a problem anymore. Or like game saves, you know, playing playing a video game and needing to specifically save your game state. Or if you don't, then all of your progress would be lost. So that's kind of like the state of today's wallets is that they're all client side. There is no way to save your state to a cloud. But if you could, if you did build this kind of decentralized cloud wallet, how much more convenient would it be and how much harder would it be to lose? Significantly uh, ends up being the answer. And that's why your mom can onboard to NFID wallet. And that's why it's really hard for you to lose access to it. To be user aligned, it has to be simple to use, hard to lose, and rewarding. Ultimately, it needs to be a DAO. So anyone should be able to participate in the governance of this wallet in its evolution. Because wallets will evolve, there will be new standards. People need to vote on whether the wallet should adopt them or not. And of course, what to do, how to disperse the treasury, uh, what to do with all that revenue. Internet identity is the only other wallet that I've seen with biometric scan. But a big problem with it is that that loss of the identity number, not saved, not being backed up properly. Right. And that is a big issue for some. Um, but you found a way to counter that with your product. And I, I think that's really incredible yeah. and novel. That was the, the reason we chose to do email auth. Because, of course, we could have done exactly the same thing. But uh, the problem is exactly as you say those numbers are, are just hard to remember. It's something else that we need to require that people remember in order for them to be able to access their wallets. And given that I've been in the ecosystem this whole time since Genesis, I know how many people have lost their numbers. It's a lot, but people don't lose their email addresses. They know their email address. They use them all the time. Those are very memorable. That ends up being your username literally everywhere, even in web two. Like most people now, sign in with social. They sign in with their Google, they sign in with Facebook, and those uh, applications, they just say, your username is your email. Like, don't worry about creating anyone. That ends up being extremely helpful for people. So that's like the first point of uh, success with NFID Wallet, that your username is something that you remember always. The second thing is when you use your biometric, right now with Internet Identity, because there is no username, when the prompt comes up, it'll say, 
use your username to sign into this URL. And that username by default is just internet identity. And so what happens if you have two or three or four? It's really hard as far as user experience is concerned to remember which one you're logging into or like which of their biometric keys are the ones that log you in one way or the other. We wanted to have a different experience where there's a username that you remember always. And then every time you use your biometric, the prompt is always recognizable. Use your email address to log into NFID wallet. Mm -hmm. And so you know exactly which one you're logging into. Um, so we chose that route. Yeah, and I think like the human brain can only remember like seven numbers at once. I think once you hit eight, like it's like very hard. Not to knock internet identity. I mean, I think it's like, great. Yeah, that's our that was our point of inspiration. Like that's when it clicked for me that this was ICP was the place that we could build this. Uh, here is something that we can kind of start to model off of. Anyone can check our our open source repositories. Uh, the code is all third party audited. Uh, and you can compare it to inner identity, there are similarities in, in how they work. So what we like to say is NFID wallet is basically internet identity, but with also the ability to store tokens yeah. uh, and you know use them, connect to your same wallet address to all these other applications. Yeah, and uh, again, I just kind of want to clear up. I, I use internet identity a lot. I think it's great. I think what you have is great as well. It's just something uh, a little bit more customized, something that a lot of apps have integrated into getting them more users for their product. Yeah. And I think that's a good way of onboarding people to something that they already know and trust. Right. And if people have their preferences for wallet, I mean, that's what's so magical about Web3 is that you can choose to use a different wallet if you want to. So there are hundreds on, on ETH and Solana. There aren't very many on ICP. Uh, but hopefully that'll change now that we have standardized, like what is a wallet and how they work, how they operate, how to connect them to applications, how applications can request that you deposit some tokens and all this kind of ways to lubricate the economy within ICP. You simplize it so that people could always just get into something that they needed. And I think that's truly a good sign of a strong wallet.